Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. Subscribers, newcomers, friends, I'm artist Susan Jenkins. Oh, we're gonna have so much fun today. I'm creating seven tiny paintings. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I would love that. And I think you'll love today's lesson where I'll be completing seven tiny paintings. There is a lot of learning in this and real time for one of these paintings. Now let's talk real quickly about supplies. Today, I just wanted to paint for the joy of it. So often I'm making videos, editing videos, uh, cleaning pastels, coming up with content, so many things. And sometimes just like you guys, I just wanna paint and relax. So what's a great way to do that? It's actually painting small. And I thought I would share with you before I paint, I'll show you my painting, but I'm literally gonna put some music on, get a cup of tea and turn on some, probably some Hauser cello music. I love his music. Um, but I thought I'd show you why Painting small is often just such a good idea. You don't have to get so serious about it. You can have some fun. If you're not happy with it, you can throw it away. <laughs> but let me show you a couple of these products before I begin painting. Now, I do have a few videos already on my channel about painting small. I love it. And um, so I'll try to put some links um, to give you a little bit more about, I actually have a little history on artist trading cards. Um, it's, it's kind of a neat little history behind how they came about, and uh, you can check that out. Now, these are ba made by the company called Color Fix. I love these little trading cards. Now, before you get too excited, I have to tell you they've discontinued making these. They are already a pastel surface made by Color Fix, and I like Color Fix. It's a nice sanded pastel paper. Um, and they have a little border around it. I usually paint almost to the edge. Well, some of these I haven't. I'll show you some of the ones I've already done. But um, it's just so convenient and handy. And they, come in, they came in different colors. Now, I have so many of them because a dear artist friend and patron of mine, Marisa, she was so kind. She's such a giving soul. She gave me, she had a lot. Um, herself for some reason. I can't remember why. And so she sent me some treats and goodies, artistic treats and goodies. So I feel so great to have such a great supply of these in different colors. Now keep in mind with color fix paper, I found this out just by buying a pack of color fix, a larger pack. This, this comes in larger paper, okay? Some of it is a little bit more sanded than others. Uh, there's one that's smooth and one that's more sanded. They're all sanded, but just uh, some of them I like better. I like a little bit more of a sanded surface for pastel painting. Um, but don't get too sad because they don't have these anymore. I make my own. I think I got a few of them in here, yeah. These are some that I made with, this one's dirty, uh, with Sennelier Le Carte Pastel Card. Um, I usually cut them just a little bit larger than the ACO. I'm saying ACEO is an acronym for Art Cards, Editions, and Originals. I like to call them Artist Trading Cards. Once again, see the video I told you about, about the history. But don't be too frustrated because we can make our own artist trading cards, even though Color Fix isn't making them anymore. So this is literally just my iPad holder. And uh, that's another thing that's awesome about painting small. You can do it in a small space. I know a lot of you are working from your kitchen counters like I used to do for so many years. And um, that's a great, great thing about painting small is that you don't have to have a large space. Real quickly, I wanted to show you the clear bags that I use for displaying my artist trading card paintings. These are ones that I used to get from Crystal Seal. I now get them from clearbags.com, but they're so great because they're the perfect size to put your little pastel beauties in. And I also love that they are conveniently the perfect size for my business cards that I get from moo.com, like the cow, that's perfect for me. And I love this company. I get the rounded corners with the square, with a matte finish, but you can have multiple images of your paintings in one order. Very cool. Now, what else do you need when you're gonna do a painting? I just had someone ask me when they saw one of these tiny paintings, where'd you get your reference images? I talk about this site a lot just because it's convenient for me. It's pmp-art.com, stands for Paint My Photo. I have over the years saved all of these different little photo albums in uh, very convenient categories. This one is fields. So our theme in the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook is fields and flowers this month. So I thought I'd pick a whole lot of fields and flowers and just start painting. That's one one great thing about when you're painting just for relaxation, you kind of lose 
the stress-free quality when you have to search around and find so many images. So you guys are also welcome to get on my, or you have to, it's free. You get on paintmyphoto.com, pmp-art.com. You create a free account. If you find me, you can follow me and you can go access all these albums of mine. It's kind of like Facebook. You can look at my photos. In this, you can look at my, uh, my photo albums and see these things. So that's where they're coming from. And very quickly here, I'm just showing my little homemade uh, trough for catching the pastel dust, just some aluminum foil. I completed a total of six paintings and realized I like the number seven. So I actually let my patrons on my Patreon page choose from four different reference images and they chose this one. So right now you're gonna see this created in real time and the rest of the six sped up at the end. I decided to just get a piece of foam core board to put here, it's a little bit nicer presentation. And I kind of like working on the black surfaces. And to be able to paint on all the edges, I don't want to put tape over the edges. So what I'm going to do is, um, oh, by the way, I'm, you know, I'm talking about my Amazon store a lot, but it's because I get questions all the time or comments on my videos about where'd you get that product? Where'd you get that? Where'd you get this? And it's really great for me to be able to just say, hey, um, go look at my Amazon store. I have everything categorized real nicely or a lot of things that I have in my videos. I love my Lim artist tape dispenser. Um, this one actually I did buy on Amazon and um, it's really nice. I put my three quarter inch artist tape. This is acid free. It's great and I just love having it in the dispenser. Artist tape isn't cheap, but it's really the best thing to work with um, when you're painting or uh, storing paintings because it's acid free. So what I do is um, usually just do my little kind of hinge system here. I can put the tape on the back, okay? And then I just put some tape on the front. Now this one might be, no, that'll be okay. Um, what I do is I just tape it on the front of this, both of these, like that. I just have two pieces like that, and I will put it up here. I usually am pretty good with getting it level. My husband says I have a level in my brain. He always just says, come here, honey, is this level? <laughs> okay, and then I, if I have a little thing, if it bothers me, I just fold it over like that, okay? Now, if that is sticking up at the bottom like this one is, you can kind of do the same thing. You can even turn it horizontally if you're wanting to cover a little more space, and that way, you're able to paint all the way to the edges. All right, artists, it's finally time to paint. I wanted to share real quickly that I decided towards the end of my first six paintings to start using white. I had used some colored color fix previously, and I love working on white because it allows me, I like both, but this allows me to create my own tone, and color fix is water friendly and acrylic ink friendly. You're going to see me using acrylic inks for this, and I'm going to share with you now some of my favorite acrylic ink colors and combinations, but I wanted to let you know I do have uh, some of these on my Amazon store, but I found out that they recently changed the price. It is way too expensive on my Amazon store. So find these at dickblick.com, and I'm gonna share, I'll put a little picture up here of the colors that I use. But this is my favorite combination of Indian yellow and fluorescent pink. I find it makes the most beautiful golden glow. It's perfect for a complimentary warm underpainting color. And it's very similar to another golden color I love, happens to be by the company Golden, and it's Golden Fluid Acrylics, and the color is Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. And you see those little bars across the top there? I love how Golden has a, a, a paint swatch across it to show you how transparent the color is, very luminous and transparent. So it allows it to show the white of the paper through, and it, it really lets it glow. But this combo with the Indian yellow and the fluorescent pink is almost exactly the same. So let's mix it up. You could use either, but uh, I love the acrylic inks. I just feel like they're so vibrant and beautiful. I'm speeding this part up just to make the video a bit shorter. I use just a, a flat brush and both of these colors. Now with the Indian yellow, one, two, three, four, I did about four drops to, let me see, one, one drop of that. And you can alter this. I wish I hadn't used a red little dish because you can't see the color in the bowl, but you'll see it as soon as I get it on the surface. 
and this is so tiny uh, you don't need to use a lot see that color I mean and it's almost identical to the quinacridone nickel azo gold I love it now I also noticed that I painted all the way to the edges on this one and I preferred that in one of the paintings or a few of them I didn't paint to the edges and it really looks better when you do if you do an underpainting now here is my um, or are my pastel selections and let me pause this and talk about them for just a minute the reference image of a beautiful field with some mountains in the distance and some purple flowers was just lovely now by the way my patrons will get um, an attachment for that image I don't share on um, my videos when I get a photo from pmp-art.com once again you can find it if you go there and look for it yourself in my album but uh, but my patrons will actually get the actual image now the field had you'll see it on my iPad while I'm painting though uh, my field had some warm and cool greens in it and I got another video coming up soon where I'm going to talk about when you would use those I mean depending on your reference image but um, I needed the cooler greens for some of the distant grasses and I have a decent amount of darks you see the uh, the dark purples and there's a couple of other darks down at the bottom rows of the uh, the middle section there it's like a dark purple and a dark blue now I've got a little bit of a dark green there and um, also um, the second row from the right has a couple of neutrals in there. Neutrals are, are really important to kind of tone things down. When things go further into the distance, they neutralize. They're usually not as bold in color. Sometimes you can punch it up a little bit. Um, but I got those blues to go on top of the purple flowers. Um, often we think uh, we just paint one color. Or they're purple or they're blue. But it's really nice to get a dark color down and then put that pop of blue. That's a Sennelier pretty blue. I love that. And then I have that pink is actually for I got another dark there the pink is actually for uh, layering down um, some ground in the distance and I thought it needed to be a little darker than the golden color of the paper and then of course the white for a couple of the little flowers oh and I forgot about the sky I chose a combination of some warm and cooler blues for the sky and you can kind of see my pastels laid out here I didn't really choose too many more I'll do another little trick here this is purple lake Daily Rowney acrylic ink this is a great color it's very dark and it's great I hadn't done this in a while and I don't know why I hadn't thought of it it is really good for using a brush and I'm using a really small little baby because that's a baby painting flat brush so I'm just a couple of drops is all you need here three drops and I'm using it to get my um, my darkest values in which is usually things in the foreground and vertical elements like trees that aren't too far away so I really love using this technique it's loose and it's um, effective and also keep in mind that these acrylic inks don't take up any tooth of the pastel surface so you're not in danger of over layering or anything like that so as you can see I'm using the brush to make um, sort of larger and taller vertical strokes in the foreground and then gradually work to the background first I'm going to go ahead and get in um, those mountains now this image had the horizon line in the upper third which is a nice composition and I also liked the way the mountains were arranged uh, often you have to uh, kind of tweak your photo a little bit if things are not quite the way you want them compositionally but typically I've learned over the years that it's best to have mountains that are turning up on the corners I think um, I think it might have been Karen Margulis who said make your mountains smiling rather than frowning same thing with trees in the distance now you don't want to get cliche and have every painting that way you can have it a few variances um, but it's usually a better composition like that now one of those hills was a little closer and had some tall looked like pine trees or something so one of my favorite words here lately in my videos is the word suggest just keep in mind all we have to do is suggest things our brains often figure things out with not a lot of information and that is typically uh, one of the questions often asked is how to get a more painterly style or I want my work to look more loose and one of the ways to do that is to learn to suggest things more 
than spelling them out. You just have a few elements in your painting that are usually what you want to be the focal point that may have a bit more detail, um, and you might spell that out a bit, but um, everything in the painting does not need a lot of detail. Now my little brush was splayed out a little bit. <laughs> it was a little bit too consistent, but it doesn't matter. This is just for a value painting, and I'm using the underneath value strokes here to um, suggest the motion um, of these things uh, getting smaller and some direction towards the distance. It will pull the eye that way rather than keeping things just flat and gradually decreasing the value in the distance. I'm trying to create some movement and energy here. And now isn't that a nice glowing beginning? And again, it didn't take up any tooth of the paper. So I'm going to get started with the sky first. Now I do have a video. Um, I already made the lesson. I've just got to edit it and get it uploaded on how the value, uh, it's value, it's on value and color temperature, how they work in the sky and on the land. So let me just uh, give you guys a little info here. The video will also have it about how temperatures and values work in the sky. Typically in a sky, your values are going to go dark from, from the upper sky to the horizon line, or in this case behind the mountains, is going to go darker to lighter. Now, because it's a sky, you know, you got to keep that in mind. It's not going to be like dark, dark, but typically your values will be a, just a tad, I needed my glasses, a tad darker in the upper heavens um, and then get a little bit less uh, lighter value. And the lightest value is usually closer to the horizon line. Now, now, with regards to color temperature, the temperature is usually cooler, like cooler blues, and a sky can be any color, but this is just in general how it works. Um, cooler colors towards the upper part of the sky and warmer colors down towards the lower. That's why I'm using more of a turquoisey blue. You could see as I was gradiating down towards the horizon line. And then my lightest value will be right above the mountains. In that area, I, I wanted kind of the, for the background focal point, there's the lighter one, to be kind of right where I'm at right now. Okay, I've been talking for a bit now. I think I'm gonna take a break and put on some music and I'm gonna pop back in and give some more commentary when I get to the flowers.
Alright, let's add some flowers. Often when I start with flowers, even if they're a little bit lighter, I usually start with a darker value as the base. In this case, I wanted a really nice dark purple, but still a bright purple. I didn't want it too dull or neutral. So this is a Terry Ludwig. I am not sure of the color number, but uh, isn't that pretty? And I've found over the years, something I'm personally trying to get better at, is notice how fresh this color looks. Notice the contrast of the flowers in the grass. Well, there's a point when this is at its freshest look. And often when we continue to work too much, we can overdo it and all of a sudden that freshness disappears and i often say because i have the advantage of watching my videos after i've painted that i've i'm starting to learn to see uh when i need to go er, and just uh, walk away and not paint anymore or at least give it a break and um, I think I'm getting better at it but I still think even this little tiny painting I probably could have just worked on it for about five more minutes or so and had it done so I do love that fresh fresh stage uh, now here are some of the lavendery purples that I'm going to add to and the way color and value works as it recedes is First, let's talk about color. It's going to get lighter 
in color, like a, more of a shade lighter and more neutral. And um, with value, it's also going to get like a shade lighter in value. And that's literally just because that's what happens in real life. When things get further away, um, color is not going to be as bright. It's going to be a bit more neutral and it's going to be a little paled out. So that's why I got some uh, other colors that aren't quite as bold as those uh, bright purples. And notice I didn't put the dark down first um, for the midfield flowers. Now this I'm just kind of glazing. Things get more horizontal in the distance and we're just giving that suggestion of maybe lots of little flowers way back there and they're so far away that it's more like a blanket of flowers. Now I'm adding a little bit more of that blue um, that's kind of like some of the blue that are in the foreground flowers and once again not also uh, not as bold but also my touch is so much lighter when I created the flowers in the foreground I was pressing harder now this is going to connect the flowers to the background by adding um, some of that blue onto the most distant mountain a little bit of that in the sky and it makes things feel very harmonious and um, and connected and this is a point where I, I actually really like this painting at this stage and I did add some grasses to the foreground. Uh, you'll see the final in just a minute. But uh, I think I think I overdo grasses often. Uh, I'm just real raw and honest with you guys because you know you can learn uh, not just by what I do right, but what I tell you that I did wrong. So uh, you know, and sometimes too, I wonder if I'm you know maybe a little too honest with stuff. I feel like. You know, I've been painting. I didn't come from a professional art background. I, I've said it before. I, I majored in graphic design. I got a little bit of a couple of artistic classes. I loved it, but I didn't have really any formal art training. And so I always feel like I have a lot in common with a lot of you guys because we're just trying to learn this often from home and um, just trying to get better. And I always say, hopefully enjoy the journey. Now I did that one little flower. I felt like I wanted something with a compositional element that's called, uh, I think it has another name, but it's also called pointing. It's like a, a directional element that uh, something creates a focal point and it also kind of points and leans in the direction to that other focal point area, which is pulling the eye back to those distant mountains. Now let's add some of those white flowers. For this I'm using, actually I usually don't use something that's this white, but I, I really liked it. I felt like some really bright white uh, flowers would look good in this. And this is a Sennelier pastel. Notice how you're even seeing little bits of it kind of fall off. This is such a soft pastel, one of my favorite brands. Um, this one is, I think, a Jack Richeson. And just like I did with some of the other flowers, I want to neutralize some of them. If you put every single flower white, especially in the area that is represented as deeper grasses, it's going to look very artificial and like they're just pasted on. So uh, I try to vary that a little bit so you don't have like white popcorn all over your painting. Now back to a lighter touch. I'm just barely, pressure has a lot, I should do a video just on pressure. It has a lot to do with the believability of your painting. And here's the final coming up in just a second. And I was happy with it, but once again, I kind of like the simplicity of it before adding um, too many grasses. And here it is in the final display that I made, literally just by using some black paper. And I cut out little frames and I put the paintings on black foam core board. I did this because somebody saw online some of the paintings and they actually wanted to purchase all of them. So I thought that was a neat way to ship them. And there are all kinds of different framing options from purchasing pre-cut mats to maybe making your own little shadow box. These are not my paintings here. Or, you know, even some kind of fun display like this. So there's lots of options. Now, because this video is already at like 33 minutes, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of some of the other paintings that I did and kind of talk through them. This was on black color fix paper, sanded paper, and uh, I really like working on black, so I had fun with this one too. Now obviously I didn't um, use acrylic ink on the black or anything, I just started working directly with pastels. So here's the little mini baby final of this one. This one was a sand kind of color piece of the Color Fix uh, sanded paper, and with this one I decided to give it a warm kind of complimentary underpainting 
and uh, just keep the general feel warm. And I veered away from the reference photo. Often I'll use a reference photo for a concept and um, just get creative with color. And by the way, the next video that I have coming up that's going to teach more on value and color temperature is going to hopefully help you to learn that once you learn some of these rules, uh, you can veer outside of whatever color is in the photograph. All right, let's do another one. I wish I could paint these this fast. Actually, they do go pretty fast um, because they're little, you know, and that's one of the great things about these is I find, like I said at the beginning, I wanted to just paint for me and just relax. I turned the camera on, you know, of course, but um, I really enjoyed this experience. Now, this one, I wanted to keep it a cooler palette. Notice the purples and the teals, but I did want to have a little bit of warmth underneath those uh, grasses and give some of the flowers more of a wine and purple color and added some cool grasses on top but you see how awesome you can layer with this color fix paper so this one was a lot of fun too I really liked adding that pop of turquoise at the end I was inspired by some really beautiful yellow flowers in one of the reference images you can kind of see a little peak of it over to the left there uh, and once again I'm sorry with the paint my photo site I don't like to pop up somebody else's photo up here they've given copyright free permission to paint it but um, again I'll share it with my patrons that's more of a private um, platform there and so I'm doing this typical thing of adding a bit of a dark base before I add the bright yellow flowers and uh, it usually helps to create more contrast and I did add some really softies like those Sennelier pastels I was telling you about it's a French word Sennelier um, and a French company but uh, that added that little pop of color and usually that's what the softies do they're best for the final stages of a painting and I really liked this one. It had a Van Gogh feel to me. I loved that uh, yellow with the teal sky. Now these last two are the same type of process of the real-time footage I showed you earlier. Obviously on the white color fixed paper and with this one I did the same Indian yellow and fluorescent pink background, the same Purple Lake acrylic ink for the values and then started layering my pastels. I got a little creative with color with this one too. I really liked some of the magenta. It's Purple Lake but it kind of with when it combines with that uh, golden color it kind of looks a little bit like a magenta color but I liked the colors in this one too. This one was fun. And this was the sixth painting that I did. I used a turquoise acrylic ink for this background and I really liked how I went all the way to the edges. It made the final painting look a bit more professional than the white edges showing through. And so I again used some of the purple lake to get values in, to get the tree line. And uh, I really loved that teal background with um, the colors that I chose for the flowers and the grasses. And just a little bit of that wispy sky and uh, the flowers just kind of drawing you in. So this was a lot of fun. I like this little poppy painting as well. So wasn't that fun? I hope you guys stayed with me to the end of this. That was a lot of painting. But here again is a better view of my do-it-yourself frame that I made for these. I am happy that it's going to a new home. I hope you guys learned a lot. You know I love sharing what I learn with you guys. So as always, subscribe if you haven't, like this video, comment. I would love for you to comment on this video and let me know how you liked it, what you liked. I'm always getting suggestions from y'all too, so it's awesome. All right, my artistic friends, a very happy painting.